This is Twit. So a lot of the Microsoft guys, as I'll refer to you, are using Microsoft Authenticator, right? Yes. Because yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. If you use it between consumer and work or school Microsoft accounts, right? You may mm. have noticed some interesting differences between those accounts and the way that they authenticate you, right? Sometimes the, you know, you're on your PC or on a website or an app or whatever it is, and it pops up that thing and you have to go. Sometimes it gives you a number. Yep. And then you go to your app and you have to select the number from one of three numbers, right? right. But sometimes it kind of does this reverse thing. I know, it's where just type the number in. It, the, the app gives you the number and then you have yeah. to type it in on the computer side or whatever, right? So I've been noticing this over the past month or so. Like this, They've been changing this up. It's kind of interesting. And then they just documented the fact that they're doing this on purpose. And it's because of something I had never heard of before, which I bet Richard has, which is MFA fatigue, which is hackers are getting people's credentials, but they can't get into the account because they don't have, they can't do the 2FA or MFA prompt. So right. they just, they send multiple requests. They automate the sending of requests to get the person to finally be like, okay, fine, in approve it, which is the stupidest thing you could ever do. Yeah, yeah, but it works. But it works because it works in the sense that it goes away. So you stop getting bothered and then you lose everything because you, you don't have an account it. anymore. So that goes away too. Exactly. So, you know, it kind of solves all the problems really. But yeah. anyway, I, I'd never heard of this, but as soon as I read the description of it, I was like, oh yeah, no, I mean, I've seen this kind of thing before. Like I've actually seen this, like, so it's, it's interesting. And so the way, what, what they did was they changed the way that authenticator works and I, they're not going to talk about how they figured this out. But if you, if you imagine that I'm here in Pennsylvania and I've done something with my Microsoft account and then two seconds later in Mexico city, which is maybe not a great example. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's some authentication attempt is made across my account and they're like, uh, no. <laughs> and the one from Mexico city looks suspicious. So what, what's going to happen with that now is it doesn't pop up an alert anymore. So if it's you, because we've all done this, right? Have you ever done this? You, yeah. you, you're, you, it says, okay, go to your app and get the, you know, okay, the thing. And you look at your phone and nothing has happened. Up. And you're like, where is it? And then you go into the app and then it pops up, right? Yeah. And that's what they're doing. They're basically hiding what they, what they consider to be suspicious alerts from authentic, for authenticator. Right. So, so you, you don't, don't get, get bothered by them. But if right. you but when are it is trying you, to authenticate, you know you to know. go to the app anyway. Exactly right. right. Yeah. Smart. It's, a great it's sad. Story. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and but, like I said, I think anyone who uses this app will have noticed this. Well, and I must, uh, have, and I must have told the story of a friend of mine who's a sysadmin who was literally on the phone with an older employee whose account was under attack. Right. And while they're going through that, he's, you know, that he's under attack, we're trying to lock things down. He gets an authenticator pop up of the old one that just says, did you want to authenticate? And he hit yes. Right. Because uh, he always hit. Uh, yep. And so, but that was really the, an, the number thing was an answer to that. If you can't see both sides of the deal, right. you can't answer correctly. So yeah. there's no way for him to say yes. Good. Right. Um, but, you know, you're looking at an arms race and a good one. Right. You know, like, and again, I'm going to reference another run as like, when That's it's talking right. to Leo about the fact that MFA uh, or, um, Phishing is no longer the number one exploit against users. It's now number two. The right. number one exploit is unpatched servers. And the reason it's bumped down <laughs> to number two is MFA. Right. right. MFA has worked well enough that phishing is failing. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That, well, I did not know that. Unpatched yeah. servers, like the big new exchange zero days that Microsoft says it's not a problem. Yeah. Uh, those well, are the problems problem. not uh, falling for phishing which also yeah, means people are using two-factor right. and there's is, a bunch but of it's it, it's still social engineering right it's just a yeah. different we had yeah. they had to adapt for the system different and they're, but they're still going after the weakness the the real weakness in the system here which is people right? yes you know, and they always do but emma you know a couple of why did mfa do so well well starting with microsoft is saying hey You've got to, if you're the administrator of an of a M365 tenant, you can simply hit a button that says everybody uses MFA mm -hmm. now. Um, but it's also part of cybersecurity insurance now. Like your insurance yeah. is void if you have no required. Yeah, exactly. It's there required, which yep. is really disturbing when the CFO signed the agreement and didn't tell IT, ask me how I know. <laughs> right right those things happen so i mean sure. driving mfa up but yeah then, then the, the conversation went on about the unpatched servers was you know the normal strategy now is that you get updates and you run them in your lab before you deploy them 
And that lag represents a security risk. So it's, you know, the conversation was just deploy the patch and deal with the consequences of it being a problem after the fact, because that's a lower risk than leaving the server unpatched. And mm -hmm. that it's, it's challenging because it, 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 it's a business decision because those quick, quick application of patches could lead to, vi to visible outages. Right. right. And so it's like, you've got to go talk to the boss and say, Hey, I'm, this is a preventative thing. You say the same way you change a, a, an exterior door to auto lock on close. It's a nuisance. You always have to use the key but you do it because the risk is significant. Right. Anyway, sorry, turning this into an IT show and it's a consumer show. No, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, no actually a consumer be, show. Because it's, you mentioned that, I think good. I'm going to, let's, let's bump our, over to something that was coming a little later because this kind of ties into this because, mm -hmm. you know, 20, almost exactly 20 years ago, I think it was 21 years ago, Microsoft announced the trustworthy computing initiative, right? Uh, yeah, it's also, so that was a, a letter from Bill in 2001, delayed .net yeah. for a year. And, it, and this topic comes up in that Dave Cutler interview we keep referencing because he, you know, <laughs> the story there is they were updating the server branch of this tree mm -hmm. uh, with security updates. And the, and the client guys who were doing XP and then were moving on the long run were not. And the thing they shipped was the buggiest thing he'd ever seen in his life, which was XP, which was UMPP, UN. UPNP, which mm -hmm. was all the attacks that would happen in the early 21st century there. And Microsoft finally had to say, look, we're, we're not creating anything new now. We're going to re we're going to reorganize here and, and do everything from a security first perspective. Right. And is it, and is it funny um, that our fond memories of XP are actually surface pack too? That's right. Right. It, that's hundred percent. Right. I, 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 yes, this is not a topic that's come up in a while, but uh, yes, I, I, our fond memories of this thing are based on V2. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, you know, all the Windows NT slash 2000 diehards are like, I'm never searching to this play school user interface, but, uh, you know, yeah, you know Windows 2000 with the and, right. yeah. yep. you know, you know, there was a lot of carping, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, they're doing it again. Uh, trustworthy computing was so much fun. Um, and uh, cybersecurity is such a problem now that they're doing a similar initiative, Microsoft, uh, today, which is called the Secure Future Initiative or SFI. Um, and not trustworthy computing 2.0, the clouding, as I'd like to call it. Um, but it's basically <laughs> trustworthy computing, but for cyber security, right? For these uh, cloud hosted services and so forth. So and this, um, this is Charlie Bell, right? I mean, that's yes, that's, that's Char Charlie obviously. has. I, I, I jokingly said to the wrong people at one point, is secure is, is identity the third rail of Microsoft? Like, isn't that where people's <laughs> careers go to die? Oh, yeah, um, because it's such a hard. Not anymore. Well, well and it, I mean, know, it, now, you know, the renaming to Entra, like all of, these are all initiatives to reorganize these security problems because they had gotten kind of lax, you know, it, it, the, the security it's, yeah, it's, for complaining about the quality of the CF, the CVSs about, you know, you're not really explaining what the problem is. Like everything's getting a bit soft. It's good to have a refocus on this. They used to be, the reference model, like you used to look at yeah. a Microsoft CVS and say, like, this is the right way to describe this. Yeah, right. I, I feel like different parts of Microsoft were just doing things differently. I, mm -hmm. I'm sure there were some baselines and some vague ideas of where things should be. But I, I think this is an attempt to bring it all in and say, look, yeah. we need we need a standard here uh, for this. And, 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 it, some, and, and everybody needs it. Like this is like nobody's yeah. going to be unhappy. This is a good place to spend money, energy and talent yeah and and for all you people who love ai and don't worry about the hallucinations you'll be delighted to know that a key component of it is ai right that uh hackers are going to be using, learning models yeah uh to um yeah to kind of meet the threat at the same speed at which the threat is coming in so to speak mm. uh so there you go Come join us on This Week in Enterprise Tech. Expert Coast and I talk about the enterprise world. We're joined by industry professionals and trailblazers like CEOs, CIOs, CTOs, CISOs, every acronym role plus IT pros and marketeers. And we talk about technology, software plus services, security, you name it, everything under the sun. You know what? I learn something each and every week and I bet you, you will too. So definitely join us. And of course, check out the twit.tv website and click on This Week in Enterprise Tech. Subscribe today. Subscribe today.